The speed of your website has a severe impact on how willing people are to interact with your content. Google shared this really cool table here, um, kind of showing the correlation between the speed of your website and the bounce rate of your visitors. And of course, the slower your website is, the higher the bounce rate is. So those are people who wanted to interact with your content, who just decided it wasn't worth it because your website was too slow. In this video, I'm gonna be talking about quite a few elements that could be contributing to your slow page speeds. Um, and then just a couple ideas of how to fix those or improve them. So let's get into it. First one is video. Uh, video content is a great addition to written blogging content, but videos can severely slow down your page speed. So you need to add the video in a way that's not going to do that. The first option is probably lazy loading. So getting the main content to load first, which will get your page up and running so that people can actually start reading and then the video can load later. Um, the other option is using a tool like Presto Player. So when your page is first loading, um, you get your main kind of written content so people can start reading. But then when they scroll and get to your video, a lazy load would have just loaded that video code there, which would still kind of slow down your page speed potentially. But with a tool like Presto Player, what happens is it just displays an image. So on the back end of your website, when you put the, the video on, um, you can opt for it to just display an image. So rather than loading the video code, it only loads this image until someone interacts with the image and then it loads the video. Um, and once people are on the page, it doesn't matter if it takes a few seconds for it to load. It's really just that first loading time that matters. So a tool like Presto Player or even just a simple lazy load uh, could be really helpful for your video content. Next up is pictures. Uh, pictures are awesome um, for websites, you know, especially nowadays, very visual websites are doing well. Well, and on blog posts, we want featured images. We want images kind of explaining what we're doing, showing what we're talking about. Um, but there's a couple image optimizations that you should do. Things like uh, making sure that you have the right size of image for the use case. So sometimes you may have a teeny little image and if you don't have that image resized properly, it's going to be loading a very large image and putting it in a very small space. There's different plugins or tools that you can use to resize your images to make them the right size. Also using like web versions of images like the WebP version um, or just any other image compression or optimization. You should get a plugin like Short Pixel um, or if you use something like Azoic, you can get image optimization through there. But all of these optimizations for your images will just make it so that wherever the image is showing, it's the right size, compressed, um, just making it as quick to load as possible. Themes. Themes are a tough one because we want our website to look a very specific way. We all have an idea of what looks perfect and we want to choose a theme that we feel looks good. However, some themes are just slow. Uh, no matter what you do with it, they're just going to be heavier on the code side, which just take, makes it so they take longer to load. That being said, there are a lot of themes out there that are really good. They're fast, they're light. Um, and they're easy to work with, very capable, and very customizable. Uh, we actually have a theme, Akabato, that's very simple. It's a great blogging theme for beginners. It's very light, easy, fast. It's a really good option. A couple other really great themes that are just fast and easy to use. The Astra theme with the Elementor page builder is great, or Cadence with Cadence blocks is also a great option. So there are tons of great options, and there are even free options that are great as well. You just have to look, and when you are looking for a theme, look specifically for one that is built to be fast plugins. Now this could be an entire video on its own. Probably each one of these points could be, but we're going to kind of run through them pretty quickly today. Plugins are one of those things that people love to load onto their website. Um, plugins, while they add a lot of great functionality and capability to your website, it may, they really make your website yours. Um, then they're great for that. However, there are a lot of plugins that are not built or optimized for speed. Um, and especially if there's a plugin that you put on your website a while ago that you don't even use anymore, uh, just keeping those the, the number of plugins on your website cleaned up is really important. So not only looking for plugins to actively use that are fast, but also if you're not using plugins anymore, get them off your site. While we don't use social plugins on our website, I've heard that they can severely decrease your page speed. So just look for the plugins, uh, read reviews on them. You might even try testing your page speed with the plugins turned on and then turning them off and then testing without them. Um, it's really important to just try every little thing and get rid of things uh, that you don't need. Another thing that you should probably be aware of is there's a lot of plugins that end up duplicating each other. 
Um, so maybe you have Google Analytics code on your website, but then you also have this optimization plugin that also runs Google Analytics code, and then this other plugin that does some sort of reporting. It's like you don't need to have all these plugins doing essentially the same thing. They're just redundant, and then they're just making your website really heavy. So be careful with your plugins. Next up is hosting. Um, if you are on a host with slow servers, this is one that could just slow down your site. And this one's kind of frustrating because a lot of times you get locked into hosting for maybe a year if you went for really cheap hosting maybe a little bit longer. If your website's really small, I wouldn't worry too much about this one. You can probably get it onto a better hosting platform a little bit later on. But if you do have a decent amount of traffic and you're pretty certain that your host is slowing you down, just move to a better host. It's gonna hurt, you know, maybe lose a couple hundred bucks, but it's gonna be worth it in the long run to get that traffic that you deserve that from those people who want to come to your website but are just turning away because your website's too slow. All right, next up we have CDN and caching. Let's talk about CDN first. So CDN is a content delivery network. Essentially what it is, and I'm just gonna give a very brief explanation here. Your content is hosted on a server in a specific location. Um, and so there are many other servers throughout the world. So if you have a visitor, you know, maybe my stuff's hosted in New York City, for example, but I have someone in Paris who wants to view my website, rather than the request being sent to New York to then deliver to that person in Paris, there may be a server in Paris that could store a copy of my website or the web page, and then that could be delivered to them much more quickly than giving the call to New York to send it to them in Paris. Now, that's a very simplified version. It's a little bit more technical than that overall, but it's very easy to get set up, and so it's totally worth doing just to deliver that content a little bit faster. And very closely connected to that is caching. Caching is essentially um, storing versions of your website, and so rather than having to access the server every single time, there can just be a cached version of that page that will kind of recheck the original version and make sure it's all up to date every now and then. It just ends up making it so your content can be delivered a little bit faster. The web browser can serve the page on your website without having to go back and reference your server directly because it already has a version stored. A lot of times caching can happen with your host, but there are also a lot of other tools that end up doing caching as well. Like if you use an ad network or if you use other tools, they may all run caching on your website, uh, which can actually cause some issues, but um, get caching set up. Again, probably start with your host and then see if there are other services or tools that are caching your website as well. Next up, we have third-party code. This is one that can definitely set on your website. I was actually talking to Ricky just the other day about a website he's building. It was really interesting to see what codes were slowing down the website and how significant of an impact they had. The four of them were Google Ads, Google Tag Manager, Analytics, and Google Fonts. So just those four codes had a significant impact on the speed of the website. And so just be aware of this. Um, those are all that we kind of want on our website. There are a lot of other codes that could be added to the website uh, that you just don't need. So again, that one's a little bit more technical, but just don't add a ton of stuff to your website through plugins or, or add-ons or extensions or whatever, and you'll probably be okay. Custom CSS and JavaScript is another one that can really slow down your website. So basically, you know, when you have your website set up, you put a theme on it, whatever, it's going to load however it was set up, right? But you can go in and add custom CSS, custom JavaScript to make it load a different way, how you want it to load. The only issue with doing this is a lot of times it'll end up loading the original version, how it was it originally intended to load, and then it will load your version. So it's kind of double loading there. Um, and that, again, just slows down your website. So whenever possible, avoid using custom CSS or JavaScript. Um, it's just one, one more little thing that could impact your website speed. Okay, a couple tools that are good for optimization. The first one's Autoptimize. Um, it's a tool that basically uh, will take all the code that needs to load after the content and it just organizes it and loads it after the content in the most optimized way possible. Um, we've seen that this one works really well, so it's probably worth giving a try. Another tool is the Zoix Leap tool. A lot of the things that we've talked about in this video can be done with the Leap. Um, and many other tools as well. But that's one that we use on our websites as we run Azoic ads on many of our smaller sites. Okay, I know we ran through all of those really quickly and this video is not intended to be a tutorial or a how to get all these things set up, just to help you be more informed of what could be slowing your website down. It's very likely that most of you have some of these things wrong with your website. Just again, like as Ricky and I were going through some of these things, talking about them, Ricky was on one of our most recent websites and going, oh wow, I just changed this one thing and it changed my website speed from a you know 56 score to a 63 or whatever. Like there's just little things that you can do to totally optimize 
optimize your score and get you into that green zone above above 90. That's where Google wants to see you and it's totally possible to do, but you really need to be intentional with how you build your website and then how you are just ongoing caring for your website, making sure that things are light and fast. Thank you guys for watching and we'll see you in the next video.